The Union Edge Talk Radio Show. Often robust, but always respectful. Standing up for your working family. Hello, welcome. I'm Charles Showalter. You're listening to the Union Edge and the Working Family Radio Network. Thanks for taking time out of your day to tune us in. We appreciate it. Don't forget, you can get the podcast, you can get the streaming radio over your cell phone your uh, or internet-ready computer. We appreciate it. Just go to WFRNlive.com. That's WFRNlive.com. And there's a bunch of great things there, so hang out and have some fun. Right now, we are talking to our brothers and sisters with the Teamsters 838, local 838 in Kansas City, Missouri. We have Joe Sutton and also Sharon Duncan. They are very successfully working on a organizing drive. They just got uh, notification of certification and uh, getting ready to sit down and negotiate that first contract. Joe, Sharon, welcome to the program. Thank you. I appreciate having you guys with us today. And now, Joe, let me talk to you for a second. You're uh, your business agent with uh, Teamsters Local 838. Um, tell us a little bit about what 838 does and what your part in that organization is. Well, I'm vice president and assistant business agent for Teamsters Local 838 here in Kansas City, Missouri. We represent members in Kansas and Missouri both. Um, we represent, in my case, I represent the... Um, school bus service, which is bus drivers, monitors, and mechanics. We also um, or we also represent the beer and soda companies, uh, warehouses, um, awards, uh, a place that makes um, aborted shirts, award, uh, t-shirts, and things like that, uh, a, printing, a printing company that makes business cards, letterheads, a box company. We represent just about anybody. You guys, so you guys have a, a pretty di- diverse local down in 838, so that that always keeps you jumping and on your toes as vice president and uh, assistant business agent. Let's talk about the, your recent uh, organizing drive with Durham School Services. Uh, All right. How long has that drive been going on, and uh, what were some of the things that you've seen? Well, the drive's been going on for about no, about six months. We had the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Denise Lear. She was here with her team, which is she's an organizer for the international. Uh, they came down to the local lo- local unions throughout the United States and Canada to assist in organizing drives. Um, she and her team um, did house calls to talk to the, and I say drivers, it's drivers, monitors. In this case, we don't, we don't represent the mechanics, just drivers and monitors. Uh, they met them out the bus yard. Uh, talk to them out there, you know, across the street from the from their yard when they want to talk to them. Um, had um, formed a committee, and with that committee's help, they uh, reached out to the other people and um, talked about what their concerns were, uh, what things they thought needed to be corrected, and informed them what we could do to possibly assist them once we were. Um, voted on and certified as their representatives. You know, one of the things I got to say to you is our, our friend Jim Glimco up in Chicago was Teamsters Triple Seven. Uh, he represents bus drivers, and he said to me, and this was a very telling thing, and I, I'd like to repeat it. It's, it. it's very good for people to understand. He says that uh, the the most precious cargo that Teamsters transport and haul are our kids in school buses. And, you know, that really resonated with me as a parent, as somebody who's concerned about all the kids in our community. And, you know, goodness gracious sakes alive, anytime my son or any kid in our community or any community in the country is on a school bus being transported, I want a Teamster driving. Just simply, you know, I want a Teamster driving that bus because I know that the Teamsters are professionals and they're going to do everything to make sure that those kids are safe. Oh, we agree. You know, I have my kids are all grown, but my grandkids ride buses, and along with the other people. And just to let you know, you know, one of the, some of the things that we have done here, <clears throat> some of the pins, you know, the local pins that we have that the the drivers can wear. One of them is a pin that that says "We carry the future," and the other one says "The future of America rides with us," and it says "School Bus Workers United." 
So, you know, we know that they carry the future. You know, they carry the next president or senators or doctors or whatever um, to and from school. These kids um, a lot of times relate to these drivers and monitors because those are the first ones they see in the morning. Uh, and they kind of dictate how their day goes, you know, as far as they all, all the bus drivers and monitors are, you know, good morning, how are you? And, you know, they got to be, they got to be nurses and psychiatrists and everything else to uh, get these kids to school and get them through their day. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a great thing. And, you know, I, I truly appreciate it when uh, uh, my son's drivers in the morning bribe them with candy on the way home. But that's another story in and of itself. <laughs> Um, I, I want to talk to Sharon for a second. Uh, Sharon Duncan, you are a driver. You're a uh, one of the committee people for this organizing drive. And um, I understand that you did a lot of great work to make sure that all your brothers and sisters I, I, at the uh, Durham School Services are getting the representation that they need. Sharon, welcome to the program. Thank you. I appreciate it very much, and I appreciate everything you're doing. Sharon, You've been a, a bus driver since 2003. Tell us a little bit about what made you decide that the Teamsters were the right way to go. Well, just a difference in changes throughout the years. As management changed, the location changed. And just here recently in the last 14 months, we have um, taken on a new manager. And it wasn't like a family anymore there. Now, Sharon, let me ask you a question. Um, is this the have you been a teamster for years and years, or was this something new for you? Uh, it's it's new in reference to the school bus um, company. I was with Teamsters years ago in my teenage years when I worked for Washington University out of St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, so you you had an understanding of the benefits that uh, unionization has for a woman and her family and how that unions are, you know, they break the glass ceiling because our brothers and sisters doing the same job, get the same pay. And it's an important thing. What, what made you decide to come back to the, come back to the family? But once I got more involved um, and started speaking with the drivers and the monitors on our location, they wanted to feel like they needed to belong to some, something. And, um, now, when you were talking to the people at Durham School Services, what were some of the things that you heard them say, and what made you say to them, the Teamsters are where we should be? Uh, well, because they were saying that there's a difference in changes, how we had pay cuts, how we had where you would get your time sheets and your paychecks, and they were short, and how they would pick and choose who they give extra work to because we're, we were not a union environment, so they did not have to follow seniority. And it's just a lot of, it was just becoming a hostile workplace with a lot of upset drivers and monitors because they just felt like since new management stepped in, and we, was, we were not being treated fairly. Joe, let me ask you a couple of questions. You've got the certification back. What are the next steps? Okay, what we'll do next is we'll um, arrange a date to have a meeting with all the members that, all the people that want to come. None of them are members yet because they don't have a contract. So, but they're, they're definitely ready. family right now. That's right. The, yeah, um, we'll have a meeting. At that meeting, we'll first off we'll take um, a vote from them, nominations, and a vote from them from the the people that are there to pick their negotiating committee. That will sit with me when I talk to the company. With uh, in in when we talk about uh, the contract and how what we want in the contract, this and that. At that same meeting, <clears throat> we take their proposals. Anything that they feel that they would like to see changed from what they get they have now is you know I just basically call it their wish list. Give us your wish list, and we'll do the best we can to get your wish list answered. The thing that is is once they're certified. Uh, which we are now. I uh, just got a certification letter yesterday. Now that we're certified, they can't take anything away from them. So if they can't come in and say, well, you were making X number of dollars an hour, but starting tomorrow you're going to make less than that. They can't do that. So what they have now, they can't, they can't lose. When we, that's when we started the, or, the organizing campaign. And um, the thing that Teamsters do is we always do our best to improve on what they have. 
Absolutely. And, you know, Joe, having been a staffer, having been a rank and file member, and having been an elected officer in my old union, the American Federation of Government Employees, uh, I, I think you got a lot of support from people like Sharon. And I also think, brother, that she is going to let you know exactly what she's thinking and what she wants. Um, well, I, I believe so, too, and, that, and that's what we want. We want the ones that oh, run all of them. But we try to tell everybody, don't be scared of us. You know, we're here to help you. It's your contract. And a matter of fact, as, as the vice president of the local here, um, they're basically my boss because, like you said earlier, with the Teamsters, you know, every three years, if I'm not doing what they want, they just vote me out. <laughs> you got it, brother. Been there and um, know what you're having to make sure that you're doing. And the most important thing that you can do is represent the members and the community. And we appreciate it. Sharon, Joe, I want to thank you very much for being with us today. Um, it, this is very educational for the people that are out there. And uh, you guys have gone through a very difficult pr uh, process in a right to work state. And, um, you guys are doing God's work. First off, Missouri is not a right to work. Oh, state. okay. Thank you. I, I thought it was. I apologize. We, we represent, I also represent bus drivers and mechanics and monitors in Kansas. Kansas is a right to work. Missouri is a union, is a close shop state. Thank you for that clarification. I appreciate it very much. You bet. I'm Charles Showalter. You're listening to the Union Edge and the Working Family Radio Network.